Here's what your page of notes should look like for section 7-3, Multiplication Properties of Exponents. Throughout this video, we're going to answer the question, how do you add exponents? Or better yet, the question should be not how, but when. So let me cross that out. That was incorrect. It should say when. When do you add the exponents? Go ahead and pause the video and write down the entire slide. Then begin the video when you're ready to follow along with the lesson. Okay, I'll assume that you paused the video and now I'm going to go through um, these different bullet points. Now this slide is important because we're going to be simplifying expressions with many exponents and coefficients. And you need to simplify it to the most simplified form. And in order to do that, you cannot have any of these, any of these expressions left in your final answer. So let's go through it. And I gave you examples of each type. There cannot be any uh, negative exponents. So if you had like 5 to negative 2 power, it's negative. You need to make it positive exponent. Remember, you have to make it happy. Uh, the same base does not appear more than once in a product or quotient. That means that you can't have 2 to the squared and 2 to the 6 in your final answer. Since they're the same base, you can combine them. So you still have one more step to complete. No powers raised to powers. So no having extra exponents. You can still simplify here, and I'll demonstrate how to do that. No products are raised to powers. So you can't have 3 multiplied by x here raised to another power because you can still simplify it further. And I again will demonstrate how to do that through various examples. No quotients are raised to power, excuse me. <clears throat> no quotients are raised to powers. So that means no fractions. Quotients are uh, called fractions here, like 1 half, can't be raised to a power. And also this is negative, so I would have to make it positive and get rid of the, the exponent by simplifying the expression. And the last part a lot of students make mistakes on, all constants are reduced and simplified. So when if I have 4 and 12 here, I can reduce and simplify 4 or 12, but I can't reduce the variables. So I would just have to do the, uh, the coefficients 4 and 12 first, and then I would be done. Okay, make sure that you keep this and you'll need to refer to this multiple times if, you're ever, um, if you ever can't decide if a expression is simplified. Now it's time for us to answer that question. When do you add exponents? Here I have 6 to the 7th multiplied by 6 to the 4th. Notice that the bases have to be the same. So you might want to write a note. Uh, half bases have to be the same. And I'm going to simplify this expression. So I'm going to write 6, 7 times, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. See how annoying that is? That's why we need these uh, properties, because I don't have to do this all the time. And then I'm going to multiply it again by still 4 more 6's. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Now how many 6's do I have total? Well, let's count. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So this is technically 6 to the 11th power. Do you think there's a simpler way for us to get that answer? Well, hopefully you notice that 6 to the 11th is the same thing as 6 to the 11th power is the same thing as 6 to 7 plus 4. And 6, 7 plus 4 gives us the 11th power. So this would have been our final answer in simplified form. So we add the exponents when we multiply, when we multiply the bases. Okay, so that was the first property learned. If you're having a little bit of difficulty, make sure to re rewind and replay this information. Now that we know the property, let's apply it. Remember, whenever you multiply the same basis, you're going to add the exponents. So here, for part A, I have 3 squared multiplied by 3 to the 5th. That would be 3 to the 2 plus 5, which gives us our final answer as 3 to the 7th power. And you don't need to expand it. That means you don't need to multiply 3 to the 7th power um, 
For our class, our rule is if it's three to the fourth or excuse me, anything to the fourth power or less, you need to evaluate that. Okay, let's look at example B. Remember, and I put a note at the bottom, it must have the same base to combine exponents. So if they don't have the same base, you don't need to combine them. So I'm going to rewrite with the same basis, 2 to the 4th times 2 to the negative 2 power. So I just put the same bases together, multiply by 3 to the 4th times 3 squared. Now combine, I get 2 to the 2nd power here, because 4 plus negative 2 is 2, multiplied by 3 to 4th times 3 squared is 3 to the 6th power. And since 2 to the squared power is less than, uh, since the exponent is less than 4, I can simplify that and I get 4 times 3 to the 6th power. And that would be my final answer. Okay, let's look at part C. Remember, they have to be the same base, so I don't combine the r squared. I'll just combine the q to the 3rd times q to the 6th, and then r squared is off by, its so by itself. q to the 3rd, so it's 3 plus 6. 3 plus 6 is 9, so it's going to be q to the 9 power. Make sure we know those are q's. q to the 9 power, and then I just keep r squared by itself, since there was no other base to combine it with. And let's see if we got d. Now, notice how the last n has no exponent, but there is something there. It's just invisible. That's going to end up being n to the 1 power. So don't forget that. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite. Just adding my exponents. n to the, oops, excuse me. 3 plus negative 4 plus 1. Okay, well, 3 plus negative 4 is negative n to the negative 1. And negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So this ends up being n to the 0 power. And any number to the 0 power is always going to give me 1 as my final answer. Okay, so once again, try these examples on your own. Look for some extra ones in your textbook.